Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, something really cool again today. I just got this box from a Creation Watches. They operate on eBay out of Singapore and DHL your orders within a day. Uh, so for me, uh, I get those watches in a day or two. And it's really cool not to, to have to wait when you really want something as uh, you probably would agree. So here is a new Seiko. This uh, line of watches came out uh, earlier this year. You might have seen the green one or the blue one, but I went for something a bit different and I think that this is a winner. This is the SRPB 94K1. And as you can see, the color scheme here is quite inspired by, I would say, Tudor and some uh, older Rolex. Uh, stainless steel with some uh, gold uh, at strategic points <laughs> on the bracelet and on the, the dial and uh, the bezel. I think it's just the right amount of gold. It's not too much. The crown is gold as well, but it's not too big. It's, it's fairly discreet. And uh, we're going to dive into uh, this watch, which is not a real diver. Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, sea urchin, uh, reference SNZF something, uh, it's the, the same ID, but with some clear improvements that almost put this watch uh, as a competitor to the SKX if you don't plan on going diving at all. Because here it's a diver style sports watch. Uh, the crown is not screwed down. Um, you have still 100 meters of uh, water resistance. So it's okay to go in the water. It's okay to uh, rinse the watch, the wash, <laughs> rinse the watch under the sink. Um, but I would not really go diving with it. And here it is on the wrist. Although it's a fairly big watch, 43 millimeter, it sits really great on my 17 centimeter or six and three quarter inch wrist. As you can see here, sized after I've removed all the stickers. I kind of wanted to have a bigger watch. So this comes at a really good time for me. And uh, yeah, I'm a fairly tall guy, so I can handle a, a big watch. Although in my own eyes, looking close at it, I usually feel like I need a smaller watch, 40 millimeters tops. So let's take a closer look at the watch. And I just got it, so it's not going to be really in-depth. But there are many things that uh, really impressed me already and that you don't see in usually uh, in the entry models of Seiko. The dial is black, quite shiny, not much of a sunburst effect. Here you have a flat crystal, and there's a good reason for that. It's a hardlex crystal. There's no AR coating, but you know, uh, Rolex doesn't use AR coating either. So you can't really blame Seiko at this price point, which is, by the way, 160 US dollars. Uh, really, really low, really entry level. And yet you have around the, the dial, those nice applied indices uh, with gold surrounds, very reminiscent of what you find on a Tudor. And for once, they have a nice uh, dimension to them, the nice 3D effect, and really well executed. Everything aligns really well. Gold is found further on the hands, which again are very elegant. Uh, you have a bit of a skeletonized uh, effect here, both on the hour and on the minute hand. The hour hand has that sort of double uh, arrow um, on it. And the uh, second hand is very simple with the no loom uh, on the watch. What's really cool here is the outer track. This uh, uh, chapter ring, this gold chapter ring, which is flat. Well, usually on the Seiko divers, it would be angled and uh, just reach the the, the top of the uh, of the watch. Instead here, just like you find on a Rolex, you have a rehot all around this uh, silver wall. So you have this uh, great effect and uh, give this watch an unusual look for, for a Seiko. Really brings it uh, in, the, um, in the realm of uh, Tudor and, uh, and Rolex. Uh, all that at a very affordable price point, obviously. Uh, the writing on the, di on the dials are fairly discreet. Uh, the Seiko 5 uh, logo is applied, while the red sports is uh, inked. So are the uh, 
details uh, automatic 23 joules and uh, 100 meters of water resistance. It's a good time to, uh, as you can see, there's a date here. But unlike the sea urchin, it's a good time to talk about the movement because it is the 4R35, sorry. Uh, great movement, which lately uh, really is, has been very uh, accurate, out of the box in all the Seiko prospect di Prospects divers that I've had. And uh, that's really admirable. Going back to the front of the watch, the bezel has one of the nicest actions. I'll shut up for a second so you can hear it. It doesn't sound cheap and it aligns perfectly. It has a satin finish. I'm not quite sure what, what it is made of, what you call it. Um, I like the, the numbering on it. I like the font, font use there. Sorry for the glare in, the, in this room. There's a, there's a light right above me. Uh, the, the case shape is, is fairly simple, but hugs the wrist nicely, which is important for such a big watch. Otherwise, it would just overhang uh, on your wrist, especially mine, which is not that big. But on my wrist, it hugs the wrist perfectly. As you can see, the bracelet just hangs down perfectly. Uh, here, there's no overhang beyond the point of the, the lugs. Drilled lug holes, really practical. The bracelet is of good quality, although it is, as you can see, folded metal. You can see the lines in the, in the middle and a simple system of uh, push pins with no color. Thank God, because those colors uh, always get lost and uh, without them, the pins for, fall off. But uh, all, all brushed here with those nice shiny gold details. I think it's just enough gold to attract the attention without looking over the top. And uh, the polished, uh, polished detail on the side. The, the clasp is very good. Uh, the bracelet, so it's 22 millimeters here, the lugs, and doesn't taper too much. It tapers only to uh, 20 millimeters here. So the, you have a substantial clasp with a double safety. First, you click it in, and you would have to push both buttons to get it out. That's one safety. And then you have an extra layer of safety. And uh, unlike some other uh, clasps of uh, this type from Seiko, this one, you really have to push quite strongly to, to get it in. So you have a feeling of uh, ultra safety here. And I push both buttons to reopen it. All stainless steel. There is no mention of made in China or anything here. It's the K1 model. So I think this one is made uh, all or mostly in uh, Malaysia. And I gotta say, uh, it looks amazing. Uh, these watches come also in uh, green. The green one is already dubbed the uh, Seiko Hulk. Uh, to me, the Seiko Hulk is the impossible to find uh, sumo with a green bezel. And I can't really tell if it's green or, or blue dial, but uh, I'm gonna get my hands on uh, one of those soon, uh, I promise. And then we'll see what's what. Um, but yeah, the green looks good and the blue looks good, but I think it's all maybe too much the same color. I think there's a bit more action happening here and uh, you could easily customize this one to with Tudor uh, snowflake hands to really give that look. But actually on this watch, the hands are, are gorgeous, um, beautiful gold and um, incredible execution. The bezel action, you will love it. I promise you. Uh, uh, from all my Seiko divers, uh, or even though this watch is not really a diver watch, uh, this is one of the best um, bezel action. Although it has a little bit of play, it's not, not too much, but it's a good sound. It feels solid. It's good resistance, not too much. And I wish you could see the, the watch in person because here under this light, uh, it looks kind of dark. Let me try to move around uh, the, the camera a little bit here. Yeah, this is a lot nicer actually. And um, yeah, these are my first impressions. Also, the, the date window is nicely placed here. Uh, as you can see, it gives a nice counterbalance to the uh, nine o'clock applied marker. 
well done there uh, by, by Seiko, I think. And it is uh, totally white, while all the applied indices and the hour hands, while everything, everywhere where there is loom, uh, it's more of a creamy color, which might not translate too, too well uh, on the camera here. I'll put some uh, more pictures at the end of the video so you can have a, a better representation of this watch. Uh, but it wears great. Um, the bracelet is doesn't rattle too much. If it didn't rattle at all, it wouldn't be a Seiko. And uh, fe feels good, light. Uh, the watch itself has some has some heft, but uh, I gotta say that the, the heft is well balanced uh, by the bracelet, and it feels good on the wrist so far. So I will be test driving it for for a few weeks, and I will let you know. Uh, what I think about it uh, in the longer run, but for now, for 160 US dollars, uh, I don't think you can really uh, beat this proposition by by Seiko. And if you're not really into into diving, uh, this is a nice uh, alternative to the slightly more expensive SKX, and it's definitely uh, nicer than the Sea Urchin, which was more of a knockoff of the uh, Rolex Mariner. I think this watch here has a bit more of its own personality. And um, yeah, it's a great uh, desk diver, as uh, people call them, great everyday watch. And it will attract some attention, but not too much. People will probably be wondering what the hell this is because this they haven't seen one yet. All right, guys, I'll speak to you in the next one. Take care.